Welcome, Harima, and hello, everybody. My name is Wendy Lawson, and I'm the Dean of Science here at the University of Canterbury. And I'm here today to welcome you to the university and to give you a few tips about how to get going to make sure that you uh, make the transition into your study here successfully. Come on in, just come on up the aisles. Um, the outline of what we'll go through, I'm going to do some introductions in just a minute. And then we'll have, I'm going to go through some things, some hints for success in your study at university. Then um, we're going to have panel question and answer session. Because when thinking about what might be most useful for you, what I thought is useful is for you to be able to ask some questions. So we'll have some questions and answers. Then I'm going to give you um, a bit of an update about campus. You'll all know that um, we've had the fairly serious earthquakes and uh, I'm just going to give you a bit of an update about where we are on campus at the moment in terms of buildings. And then I'll say a few final words before sending you off to the rest of um, the day. It's a lovely day out there, so I'll try and make it at least relatively fun in here. Just first of all, um, in terms of emergencies, possible emergencies, just going to say a few things about safety. And this first slide here is about preparing yourself for an emergency. I don't want to dwell on the earthquakes, but we do have to cover off a few things about safety. The, and these are a few things about preparing yourself and what to do um, in your lectures and labs, but also what to do right now. Have a look around. Work out where you're going to go if there's an aftershock. Have a look around. Those benches are pretty small. They'll get pretty crowded under there, but that's probably where you're going to go. One thing you need to do when you, when you get used to your timetable and get used to your lecture theatres is have a read of the emergency procedures which are just inside the door in each of your rooms. And in this particular room, the emergency procedures are inside that little foyer over there. So many of you will have walked past them. On your way out, just have a wee look just to familiarise yourselves with those. Um, in particular, make sure you know if the building's evacuated, where you need to go to. Usually, um, you'll be led out there by a staff member if there's an evacuation, but just familiarise yourselves as well, and I'll come on to that a little bit more later. One thing you can do right now is put that telephone number into your mobile phone. It's a, the UC security line. That's where you dial if you ever need help on campus, um, security service type help. So why don't you just put that number into your mobile right now or write it down and put it in later. And there's, I'll put the web address there if you want to find out any more detailed information. Somebody's come well stocked for later on. <laughs> the clink of bottles in the bag. So if we have an aftershock while we're in here, there's a few do's and don'ts here. The normal thing, drop, cover and hold. Probably under the desk in front of you is going to be the place to go. Follow the instructions of myself in this particular case. The staff, the lead staff member here is myself, so just listen to what I tell you to do. Obviously, sometimes adrenaline overtakes that listening power, but um, that's, I'll give you instructions. If it is necessary to evacuate, we'll proceed to the holding area for this building or Island Fields, and you may or may not have worked out where Island Fields is um, yet, but it's on the other side of Island Road. And if we move outside the buildings, just think about, I'm sure that um, lots of you are used to this already, those of you from Christchurch, but just think about, don't walk and do anything that's going to put you in danger. Don't move around while the shaking continues, just keep still, you should be drop, covering and hold. Don't go off anywhere on your own. Just stay with somebody else. Even if you've never met them before, just stay with somebody else. And don't, if we evacuate, don't go into buildings until there's a, a clear instruction that you're able to do so. How many of you are not from Christchurch? Okay. So there's be a bit of getting used to some of this stuff for you then. Adventure education. Okay, so as I said, I'm Wendy Lawson and I'm the Dean of Science here at the University of Canterbury. I'm also um, a geographer, is my, um, my academic department and my specialty area is glaciology. So some of you at some stage, 
Later in your university study, you may have me for some of your lectures for your sins. Not here with us today is Paul Fleming. So Paul can't be here today. Paul's the Pro Vice Chancellor of the College of Science, and I won't bore you with an explanation of how the University of Canterbury is structured, but suffice it to say that Paul and I work very closely together on matters to do with your degrees, and um, facilities related to your degrees, the state of the labs, the staff, and things like that. The key people in the College of Science that you're likely to meet in terms of academic matters are these three people. On the left is Isabel Phillips. Isabel Phillips is the academic manager for the College of Science and she helps with designing your degree, um, making sure that you've got all the points necessary to graduate, making sure you're set at right to carry on and then making decisions about what should and shouldn't happen. Tracy Robinson. Tracy, will you stand up and make yourself known? Tracy is the student advisor in the College of Science, and some of you may well have already seen both Tracy and Isabel um, already sorting out various things. Certainly, we've had a flood of people through the college office this morning. Um, and on the top right there is Justine Broham, and Justine is the receptionist at the College of Science and the, the administrator. So if you go into the College of Science offices, which are kind of over in that direction on campus, if you go into the College of Science offices, Justine is the person who's on the front desk, ready to take your query and work out what you need to do. Other people, um, other key people we have in the room today, um, with lots of key people in the room today, you being the main key people, but people I want to introduce you to, Mohamed Zaidan. Mohamed is the... Um, student support advisor for the College of Science and Mohammed's job is to basically give you help and advice on non-academic matters as they impact on your university study. So it might be to do with sorting out issues to do with fees, if you're an international student it might be sorting out issues to do with visa, if you've got a problem with housing you might um, go to Mohammed as the first stop to work out how to sort it out. So all of those things that impact on your ability to study. And there's some um, leaflets down here if you want to pick one of these up. This has got a more comprehensive list of the kinds of things that Mohammed can help with. Another um, key person in the room is the College of Science Maori advisor, Kaya Rahi, John Perker. Stand up and make yourself known, John. So a uh, particular point of contact for Maori students in the college and uh, things that affect um, Maori students in particular. John is also an academic in uh, the School of Biological Sciences, so those of you who are taking biology will undoubtedly see John. In fact, I think John was mumbling about having to slope off and sort out his lectures for next week, so um, we'll see. See how you go, John. I'd also like to introduce you now to um, two special students in the room. These are our student panellists who are going to answer um, some of your questions later on. There's enough of you in the room that we can have questions and answers for three hours, so we'll have to see how we go. Um, Cameron Ellis. Cameron is just starting his third year of a psychology degree, so two years ago we're sitting where you are, um, just getting ready to start study at university. And Nixie Boddy, who's doing a BSc with joint honours in biology and geography, and she's also starting her third year and was well, she wasn't actually sitting here two, two years ago because she was off doing something else apparently, but never mind. So, um, just want to talk a little bit about learning at university. And I'm going to focus some of my comments on how it's different to learning at school. Now, I can see there's some people um, who've who are in the room today who obviously haven't just come straight from school, but hopefully these tips will be useful for all of you. One thing that is different, especially about studying science at university, is that you will have, um, generally for most courses that you take, there will be lectures and labs, and they're two separate learning streams. They're very closely related, but the practical work you do for, say, chemistry or geography or geology or whatever it is, you all do at a separate timetable time. The lectures are typically 50 minutes long, so they start on the hour and they finish at 10 to the hour. The labs are typically two hours or three hours or sometimes four hours long. And you really get into some things in detail in those labs. So they're two, two separate streams in terms of the timing. And you go to both of them. Yeah? 
Each of, for, for the, um, you all go to the same lectures, but then for labs, you're typically divided up into different groups. And that's what's called a lab stream. And you'll be working out which lab streams you're in right at the moment. Yeah? You need to go to both. One really significant difference between school and university is that it's much more about your independent motivation to learn. Nobody will be chasing you up if you don't turn up to lectures. So it's up to you. Um, if you don't want to engage, well, that's fine, but you're not going to do very well. It's not optional. Um, if you want to do well, then engage as much as possible. Yeah? So you have to be self-motivated. If you find you're having problems with that, don't sit there and wait until the end of the semester and get your D's and your E's. Come and talk to us. Talk to Tracy. Talk to Mohammed. Yeah? Talk to somebody if you're having trouble with your motivation. Because you wouldn't be the only one. Another um, difference, I think, to school is that compared to your interactions with your teachers, you'll have less interactions, at least at first at university, with your lecturers. You know, you can see how many people there are in the room here. No matter how big your class at school, it wouldn't have been this big. Yeah? So there's, there's a lot more students to each staff member. And so you'll probably have less individual interaction, at least at first, in your first year. When you get to third year, it's a completely different matter, and you'll have much more one-on-one -on -one interaction with your lecturers. It doesn't mean they don't want to. It's just the, the nature of the teaching. Yeah? One thing um, to just be aware of is that you'll be used, most of you will be used by now to the NCEA system, whether you either get the credits or you don't get the credits, and you can get the credits with excellence, merit, achieved or not achieved, obviously, if you don't get the credits. At university, the grading scheme, most of your items of assessment, you'll get either a lesser grade or a percent grade for. Yeah? So you'll get anything from an E plus, uh, an A plus, not an E plus, well, you don't give E pluses, you'll get anything from an A plus to an E. Hopefully you'll be getting some A pluses. So you get a good idea of where you're sitting. It's not just a case of achieved, not achieved. You'll get a good idea of how your performance is going. Those grades are used over the duration of your university career. So, so within each course, you might have a series of labs. You might have a couple of essays. You might have a project. You'll get a mark for each of those items. Then you'll get a mark for the overall course, and that's what goes on your record, and that's based on all of those assessment items in that course, including the exam at the end, if there is one. So you get one mark for each course. Then at the end of the semester, at the end of the year, at the end of your degree, those marks are calculated into what's called a GPA, a grade point average. And that's what indicates to us how well you're doing. If you get a high GPA, we know you're doing very well. You get a low GPA, you're not doing so well. We have a system of um, academic review that we do each semester, and those students who are falling below um, a marks threshold, a 1.5 GPA, we have a look at those students carefully to work out what we need to do. But hopefully none of you will be in that category. It's a good start that you're in this room engaging with the opportunities offered. Um, the other thing is that your learning here is flexible. There'll be set times for lectures, set times for labs, there'll be assignment deadlines, but that assignment deadline, you're likely to be given an assignment that's got a deadline one month away, two months away, whatever it might be. When you do the work for that assignment, it's up to you. Nobody will be checking. Your lecturer's not going to be saying, have you got started on that essay yet? How are you doing with that project? Um, get moving on it. It's up to you. So you have to sort of think carefully and plan out your work, and it's up to you. So it's that's really useful because it's flexible, but the risk is, of course, if you don't get onto it, if you lose motivation, if you're not very motivated, then it'll, all, it'll come lower in your priority list than it should do. Yeah? Anybody got any questions about any of that so far? Cool. Just wanted to say something about your, the people who will be teaching you. 
And they're, they're in terms of a sort of professional group, they're a bit different to your teachers at school. One thing is that um, teaching, teaching you guys, is one of the two key things they have to do in their job. The other one is do research. So almost all of the people who are giving you lectures and teaching you in your labs are going to be doing teaching and research as part of their professional career, which is a bit different to your teachers, and we have to do both, academics. So one, one of the things that that means is that when they're talking to you, when they're teaching you about subjects, they're teaching you about the stuff that's really up to date and really exciting, and, and often it'll have come out of their lab the week before. So that's pretty exciting. Most of those people will have three university degrees. So most of them will have an undergraduate degree. Typically in the College of Science, it'll be a BSc, a master's degree, and a PhD. So they'll have been at university for Oh, anywhere between six and nine years. That might be you one day. You might get really hooked on this whole degree thing, this learning thing. <laughs> the other thing is that you'll find that um, many, if not most of them, are international experts in their area of research. And some, some of these international experts will be perfectly obvious um, right at the moment in terms of earthquake science. Um, Jard Pettinger, for example, who's um, the head of the Department of Geological Sciences and lectures at 100 level in geology, is, is routinely called upon by the international media to comment on earthquakes in general. Um, there'll be many, many of the lecturers who teach you have been involved in the media in some way in relation to their, um, in relation to their work. And all of them will be publishing their research in international journals that are read by people from all over the world. Have a Google. When you, get your, when you find out who your lecturers are, Google them. Do a bit of finding out about that. It's really cool to see what people do. For some of your labs, um, you may well be taught by postgraduate students. So these are students who are in the middle of their master's degree or their honours degree, their postgraduate honours degree or their PhD. So they've completed a BSc, they're working closely with a, a staff member on their research, and they're um, working also in helping in the lab. So some of the people in the labs are likely to be postgraduate students. And again, for some of you, that'll be you in a few years' time. So here's a few hints for success, and some of the, you might have picked up on some of these already that I've um, been hinting at. One is go to all your labs and lectures. You might think, oh, lectures, nobody's checking out. I'll get the stuff off uh, the internet later on. I don't really need to go. You could. It's not nearly as good. You might try that a couple of times and see what you reckon, but it's not nearly as good. So it's always a worry when students say, oh, no, I'll pick up the PowerPoint later, because it just, it's just not as good. You get the... You get the explanations face to face, you get, you see, understand the comments better. So go to everything. Don't slack off. Some of the lectures at 8 o'clock, who's got an 8 o'clock lecture? Is that going to be a shock to the system? Cameron claims to like 8 o'clock lectures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you think it's bad to go to an 8 o'clock lecture, imagine what it's like to give one. Imagine having to stand at the front and give a lecture at 8 o'clock. That's not pretty. Yeah. Three sleepy students. Second one, take good lecture notes. And you might say, well, how do I do that? Um, have a bit of a Google around taking lecture notes. Experiment with yourself about how to do it. You might want to start off with an A4 pad and just fill it up. You might want to experiment. Try another lecture where you simply listen and write down a few keywords. You might have already got this perfected at school. You might have worked out really good ways to take notes at school. You might think there's nothing to learn there. I don't need to worry about that. I suggest you just experiment a little bit. The other thing you might like to do is just buddy up with somebody. In each of your lecture classes, you might already have a friend who's doing your courses. But if you don't, why don't you buddy up with somebody so that um, you can compare lecture notes, maybe do some of the readings together, whatever it might be. But practice, experiment, work out what works for you. The third bullet point there is read. And this might, this might appear to be phenomenally obvious, but I say this based on years of experience of 
giving out information, um, giving out reading lists, and then nothing actually happens with that stuff. So you read everything. Read all of your handouts in detail. So don't just skim read it. Read every single word that's on the handout that the lecturer gives you in class. Do the readings that you're directed towards in lectures and labs. If you're not sure, if it looks like too much and you're not sure where to start, go and ask the lecturer at the end of the class, not quite sure where to start with this, what would you suggest? Or ask a classmate. Divide it up with a classmate and share notes. Read any textbooks that you buy. Now, that might sound obvious, but um, buying a textbook and sticking it on your bookshelf at home is not the same as reading the textbook. Okay? And it's the same with material that you um, print off, download from the internet, or photocopy. Photocopying, downloading, and printing is no substitute for actually reading it. Okay? I say this from experience. The number of things that I've photocopied, put them aside and said, I'll read that later. It's like, yeah, right. Just get into the habit of just reading. That's the thing you need to set aside time to do at your university level study. And of course, your own lecture notes. And I've just talked a little bit about some ideas on how to get yourself up to speed with making good lecture notes. The next point there is get yourself organized. Again, it might come under the heading of the absolutely bleeding obvious, but you'd be surprised how many students who end up at the bottom of the class that it's purely a matter of organization. It's got very little to do with intellectual capability. In other words, whether they can get an A or a B. It's got to do with whether they're organized enough to get to lectures, get to labs, hand in their assignments on time, do things to a deadline, organize work so they can do things to a deadline. So get organized. You guys got a UCSA diary? Got a little diary pack? Use it. Or if you don't like that one, buy yourself another one. Or use an online diary. But just use a diary, put in your deadlines, manage your work. This might be... Um, you know, by the time you get to your age, it might be, uh, might be a lost cause. But maybe if you, if you think of yourself as slightly disorganised, why don't you just try to up your game a little bit at university? Turn over a new leaf. The final thing on this slide is, um, is something that I didn't say last year, but when we, we had a sort of a bit of a briefing session getting ready, ready for today, just wanted to say that. Remember that most of you will be in, engaged in what's called full-time study. Remember, full-time study means study full-time. It doesn't mean go to all your lectures and labs. It means study full-time. What's full-time? Well, 40 hours a week is typically thought of as full-time. So that means studying eight hours a day, five days a week, or spreading that over the weekends if you prefer. Like I say, it doesn't mean a couple of hours a day and then squeezing it all in before the deadline for the assignment. So full-time study means study full-time. Many of you will be fitting work around your study. Try not to fit study around your work. That's a slippery slope, heading to not a good place in terms of grades. Yeah. Try and make sure that you fit your work. If you have to do work, as in paid employment, off campus, fit that around your study and not the other way around, eh? OK. Now. You may well already have done some of these things, some of you. Some of you might have got quite a long way down this list. A couple of things I just want to um, draw your attention to. Make sure you are familiar with your university email address. Somewhere in your enrolment process, you will have signed on a dotted line to say that you will check your university email address. You might like to have it forwarded to your Gmail address or a Yahoo address or whatever it is you use, and you can do that. Um, lots of people do, but you do need to check your university email address. Important stuff will be sent there. Okay? So get used to doing that. This might be the first time that you've had to deal with two email addresses. Spend a bit of time working out how you're going to manage that, okay? Because you don't want to miss stuff on your university email address. One of the reasons for that in particular is that the online course material system we use, which is called Learn, delivers emails to your university email address when there's something new there you need to look at. So if you don't go to university email address, you miss all that information. Familiarise yourself with your timetable. Um, 
hopefully for most of you that's under control. There may be some minor issues to resolve there. We've got a new timetabling system for the university this year, which is completely different to what it's been in previous years. So um, hopefully that's all right. I mean, you guys won't have anything to compare it with in terms of since you're all first year students. Um, but for, for some of the staff, it's quite painful at the moment. So make sure you know where you're supposed to be when. Point number three there, familiarise yourself with the campus. If you haven't already, you might like to take one of the campus tours. There's a campus tour starting from out here at two o'clock. Just start to get to know the campus a bit. And if you, don't, if you can't, can't go on the tour or you don't get around to it, the popcorn looks more inviting, set aside an hour later on or next week or something. Just say to yourself, I'm just going to have a wander around and work out which building is which. You'll have to do it to a certain extent to make sure you're in the right place at the right time for your lectures. But have a bit, bit broader of a look round. It's your campus. You're going to be here for three years, some of you even more. Make sure you get to know it. You don't want to be in, in your third year, the second half of your third year, discovering a really cool spot, a really cool cafe that you've never seen before. Because then you'll kick yourself and wish you'd found it earlier. Fourth bullet point there, really importantly... Um, and this is all about your learning, is familiarising yourself with the library and its collections. Go online, spend an hour having a browse, have a look round. Some of you may already have course material, um, had a look at stuff online. Um, go and have a look at the library, see what you can track down in your subject area. Just have a, set aside an hour, random browse in the library collection. Pick out things you're interested in. Look for books that you already know about. Just get used to using it and working out where things are. Go to the library and have a library tour. The library is the big building over there. I'm sure you know where the library is. I hope you know where the library is over there. I've already talked a little bit about the online um, learning site. Um, have you guys got access to that yet? Yep, great. There's at least one, yeah, a couple of nods. So the rest of you who didn't know that, you have access to learn. <laughs> so have a look at learn, get familiar with that. That's a really good thing to get used to early on. Just go there, do it, and have a look round. Just wanted to mention um, a, a centre on campus that's called the Learning Skills Centre. The Learning Skills Centre can help you with all sorts of things to do with it won't teach you about biology, it won't teach you about chemistry, it won't teach you about geography, but it'll teach you things like writing a good essay, writing a good lab report, how to do a good assignment, um, self-managing, those sorts of things, how to write well. So have a look at the Learning Skills Centre, find out the courses that they offer and think about taking some of those courses. Engage with it earlier rather than later. Some of the students that we see who are dropping off the bottom of that grade point average scale, we send them off to the Learning Skills Centre and they come back and say, I wish I'd known about this earlier. Yeah? So if you know you're not a particularly good writer, why don't you just have a wee look um, later on today, see what there is there to help you. The, the final bullet point here is just familiarise yourself with where to get some help. If you've got a question about an individual course, the thing to do is to ask the course coordinator. What's the best way to ask the course coordinator? It'll depend on the individual person, but typically if you go up at the end of the lecture with a question, that's a good time to catch them. Yeah, you might drop them an email. Ask the course coordinator if it's specifically to do with the course. If it's something to do with your programme of study, in other words, which, you know, I'm I'm thinking of changing subjects or I'm not sure that I've got the right sort of number of points here or I'm doing too much and I'm not coping and I need to drop some, come to the college office and talk to Tracy about your programme of study and she'll help you redesign it. Learning Skills Centre, I've just mentioned that. Um, there's also Mohammed as a student support advisor. Just work out where to get help. There's all sorts of help on campus. There's loads of things that you probably won't discover in your three years, but the more you, the more you sort out sooner, the better. Okay, what we're going to do now is take some questions. Tracy, do you want to come and sit on the panel, please? Yes, come on. John, can you come and sit on the panel? Mohammed, will you come and 
come on. Great. So what we'll do now is um, take some questions and feel free to ask any questions. If we get a question that we can't answer, if it's quite specific about a specific course or something like that, we'll do our best to answer it. And if we can't, we're, we're just going to make a note of it um, and we'll get back to you with an answer. But um, go for it. Any questions about starting at university? Um, I suspect that the two students here will be particularly useful for those, but feel free to throw out any questions. Yeah. Uh, where do you get the diary you mentioned before? Where do you get the, we'll ask you, where do you get the diary? There's a student association booth out here in the foyer? Is it in the foyer? No, it's out in the lawn. On the lawn? Yeah. Where is it? UCSA has offices as well? Yes, just in the Height. It's, it's in James Height with the UCSA, so you can get it with other stuff in a black bag. Yeah, the under yeah. Question up there? Uh, what sort of grade average like um, the, the grade point average here at UC runs on a 9 scale, so um, 9 being an A+, plus, and you work your way down, so it's probably 1.5 is around about a C, C+, plus, C, around that, that mark, so you can work it out, and it's an average, so you just add up all your grades, you know, 9, an 8, and a 6, and a 3, and divide that by 4, and that's your GPA, so it runs on a 9 scale, and then you just um, get the average score of that. It's, um, I just worked out, it's between a D and a C, okay, so it is quite low. If to, to be falling below that threshold, you are failing more than half your courses. So I'd, hopefully, those of you who are in this room won't be having to worry about that. Don't, please don't fret about that, that was just to fill you in on a process. I don't want you all to go away and get nervous about falling below that threshold. Yeah, question me. Um, <clears throat> the, we, we've, we've, one of the things we've done new for this year is adopted a standard grading scheme because in previous years departments had different grading schemes that varied. Um, I can't recall. Can you recall what? Hang on, I just worked that out. <laughs> So a B plus is 75%, 75 to 79.9%, okay? okay? Question over here. Um, I don't have my timetable because I have issues with studying. So on Monday, do I just go online and like, look at any lecture and turn up to it? Yeah, um, so, so there's a course outline page where you like go onto the UC website, find your course, type in the course code and it will tell you the location and times of the lectures. So even though you won't have your personal timetable, you will be able to find out any lecture times. And this is also really helpful if you're not sure about all the subjects that you want to do. So maybe you're tossing up between two subjects and you haven't enrolled in both of them. You can look at this page to see what time that lecture is to go to it just to find out what it's like. You're allowed up to two weeks to do that, up until the 2nd of March. You're allowed to go to um, any lecture or classes and sit in on them. And it's good to make a judgement call if you're not sure whether the class you're actually in you like, but a friend saying this class is really good. If it fits with your timetable, go along, give it a try, a bit of a taste test. And if you like that one, come out of your course and change into the other one. And it should, should work for the 2nd of March at 5pm. Question over here. quite a few people with clashes at the moment and it's a bit difficult, they've all been told to come and see me, all 486 of you, um, so, so it's good that half of you are here today. Um, the, the situation stands is that we can't really manipulate the timetable too much more and um, in the past when people have had clashes it's up to you to try and organise um, around this, either 
A, by coming out of that class and finding a class that does fit your schedule so that you can attend all lectures, or B, you can, um, as Wendy said, perhaps team up with someone and one goes to one class, one goes to the other, and then you can share the information afterwards. Um, there might be another option where some of the classes are, um, if you want to deal with the clash, some classes are videoed and put up on Learn, and then you'll be able to catch up afterwards by doing that. If it's a situation of uh, lectures cannot be moved, but labs can. So sometimes manipulating your laboratories, so coming out of one, going, talking to the lab person, telling them you've got a clash with the lecture, there may be a little bit of movement then. So I would suggest sit down and work things out and see how you go in the first instance. Just as a matter of interest, the timetable has been designed to avoid clashes for <laughs> students. Um, now, there are, some, there are some issues with labs, but in other words, where students are involved in, you know, where common combinations, there shouldn't be class clashes between common combinations of courses. There was another, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Um, how long have you got? The, it's, the University of Canterbury has a, a complex structure um, and the pro-vice-chancellor, I mean if this is something that concerns you, um, the pro-vice-chancellor reports to the vice-chancellor, I report to the, the, the pro-vice-chancellor and the, a, the assistant vice-chancellor academic. So essentially we're kind of side by side if you like. It's a complicated structure, but um, yeah, it would, it would um, a large number of the staff don't understand it, let alone the undergraduate students. So. All I'd like to add to that is that um, when you're dealing with the BSc degree, the big cheese is standing here. That's all you I'm your big cheese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yeah. buck stops. With yeah. The It, it will depend a little bit, um, and some lecturers will, if, if you're talking about tutorial or lecture? Lecture. Okay, so lectures and tutorials are a bit different, so I'll, I'll actually answer both, because it just it'll explain a little bit about the difference. Some lecturers will prefer you to wait until the end, and some lecturers will be open to questions during the lecture. And it's kind of, some of them will be explicit about that, and will tell you, and others of them, you'll just kind of have to work it out yourselves. And sometimes it'll be really obvious that a question needs to be asked. In a tutorial, a tutorial is much more interactive. And in a tutorial or a lab, the whole idea is that you are asking questions and getting clarification as you go along. So that's the time when you, you ask questions from the word go. That's the whole idea. Okay? Cool. Yeah. Um, you just, in terms of the timetable, you just need to keep your eye on that timetable page. It's a very live issue. Um, it's, it's still being adjusted because as you guys enrol and it transpires there are different course combinations, there are minor changes being made, okay? So it is very live, but just be aware that your semester two courses don't start until July, so the timetable is not fixed for those yet. Question up here. Um, yeah, so with textbooks, I um, have the opinion that I, I don't buy my textbooks, but I read them in the library. So um, at the library, there are all the textbooks for all your courses for free on loans for as much as you need them, really. Like, it's on three-hour loans, but if you're reading your textbook for more than three hours at a time, that means you've done something wrong. Um, 
So, so I don't buy my textbooks because they're $150 and that's just a waste of money. So what I do is I go to the library, um, so easy to check them out. No one actually gets the books out until about a week before the start of the tests. So you've got so much time to like just prepare up till then. Um, I would say there definitely are, like you're not meant to say this, but there definitely are courses where you don't need the textbook and there are courses that you definitely do need the textbook and you will figure that out quite quickly when you're doing it. I'm not going to name names, but... <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah, see me after. But um, yeah, definitely some courses, and they you will find out like half the test will be about the textbook, and that will hurt. Yeah, Nixie, yeah. different different perspective, perhaps. Um, All the same. Well, the lecturers are generally aware that cost is an issue for students, so in general, I would say buy the textbook, especially in first year courses that I do. If they say buy it, then buy it, and if they just would like you to have a look at it, but it's not worth buying. They put it as a recommended text. Um, so that might be a good way to try and save money, especially in the, from a biology point of view. There's a biology Campbell and Reese textbook you have to have. It's like the encyclopedia of all things biology, and it's helpful the way through. Um, can yeah, can for, it's the same textbook for all three courses, so it's not too bad. That, isn't it? I think there's a second-hand books sale as well with the um, UBS, so make full use of that, you know, trot along and you can actually get them for a good reduced price. Just check the edition that you're buying and sometimes you even get handy notes from other people who have left them in there, so it's also good to look at that rather than buying a new text. Can I just uh, make a comment as well? The, the key thing is not whether you buy it or not, it's whether you read it or not. <laughs> get my drift? Yeah, whether it's in the library or whether it's in your bedroom or where, whether it's in the, you know, in your flat kitchen or whatever it is, that's not the key issue. The key issue is that you've in interacted with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. A lot of a lot of lecturers are also moving to online textbooks now, and I know that some of the some of the lecturers in biology are doing that more and more. Yeah, there's a question over here. Yeah, so just make sure you all understand that. The two weeks at the start of every semester, you can change your courses during that two weeks without penalty. Okay? So if you're not sure about two subjects, you know, as Tracy said before, try them both. Sit in on them both. See what you think. Yeah. Where do you get the textbooks from? The UC bookshop is um, on campus, and that's a good place. There's online, you can often get them cheaper, and there's quite a few sites for that. Does it matter what you get? Uh, yeah, that'll be specified on the course page, and you'll probably get given a handout with it on as well. And for some courses, it will matter a lot, and for some courses, it won't matter too much. So if in doubt, ask the lecturer concerned, in terms of the, the last part of your question, the additions. So the biology textbooks, it moves fast. Um, and um, in other subjects, it doesn't move as quickly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, question up there. Um, is it recommended to sort of get like textbooks before Monday, like before lectures, or do you sort of get them like the first week, so like next week? Do you guys want to answer that? Yeah. Um. Well, as I said, I don't get them, but uh, <laughs> you shouldn't need to do any reading before the first lecture or you've got a very painful lecture ahead of you. Um, enthusiastic. Yeah, uh, but it, can't, it doesn't hurt to read the introduction chapter to all your textbooks before you start because yeah. they won't have that as a required reading most of the time. It's just something so that you know what the textbook's going to be about, where to find things like... Yeah, they give lots of advice. Um, yeah, so I'd say you can wait until your second lecture. But, I mean, if you want to buy them, there's no point waiting because they're not going to go down in price. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. I mean, if you're really keen to get going over the weekend, um, you get hold of the textbooks and uh, read the introductory chapter. That's a really good idea. If you're raring to go and can't wait till Monday... <laughs> no need to laugh, panel. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, one over here. Um, how do you know if you've got your time to get what streams for the labs are in? Because on the website it has all the different streams and different times, but the study link hasn't come through. You don't know what one you're 
often there aren't labs in the first week, and that's not obvious, but they'll tell you in the first lecture, and often there's a lot of issues around that, so they might get you to sign up to a lab online, or yeah. a, a lot due to one, and then you can complain if it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. the, there is a lot of, uh, most of the courses <clears throat> won't have labs next week, and there is a lot of shifting around and just sort of settling down in terms of lab streams next week. So don't worry too much if there's sort of something still outstanding because that will be sorted out. Okay? Somebody here had a question? Okay. Somebody up there just wave their arm. It's gone. Okay. Anybody else? Yep, yeah, here. Um, do you want to have a go at this, guys? Or so uh, all, uh, except for really small rooms, which you'll never have in first year, all lecturers will have microphones. Um, but because of the PA system, they don't record it automatically. You can get um, uh, dictaphones and just stick them on the top of that lecture table, and they don't care. They they don't mind if you do that. Um, it's also really good if you've got a clash and you want a friend to just record the lecture for you. But yeah, unless there, there is programs that do it and some lecturers take the initiative, but it's definitely not normal and it's quite rare that they'll record the lecture for you. If, um, if anyone has a disability or has a hearing impairment or eyesight or... What do you use the microphone? <coughs> if somebody's got a hearing impairment, they won't be able to hear. Yeah, if anyone has a hearing disability. <laughs> um, or, or maybe sight. Or um, if you go skiing and you break your arm or your leg and you kind of think, shit, what am I going to do now? Um, <clears throat> we highly recommend you either contact the college office myself or Muhammad or uh, the disabilities office. Now, we're all here to help you because the idea is not to let you fail or set you up to fail. So the idea is that we would find someone to take your notes or we would get you to be able to help... We had one girl who um, basically just about broke her back on a skiing accident. She had laboratories and we organised a sling where she could lie in it and do her work in the laboratory. <laughs> and, <laughs> so I don't think you'll get off that easily. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> and so you really need to use these resources and it's not at any cost to you. It's just managing to get along to these people and we will help you out so that you're not behind with your work because saying, oh, I'm sorry, I just couldn't get in is not going to be an option if you're up on the, um, the list for the naughty boys list. Um, so you need to be able to get help and be proactive. Don't just sit around and, and say, oh, well, I can't go because I broke my arm or I can't write notes. Get, get to see somebody and we'll get someone to do it for you. Um, so it's really useful if you do have a problem with hearing lecturers or you're not sure please seek some help for it. It's not that difficult and we will help you out, no problem at all. Just typically in a big le if, if you're in a big lecture theatre like this, um, it might be that there'll be three or four of those digital dictaphones sitting on the front, people recording lectures, so that's fine. Usually as a matter of courtesy, it's a good idea to ask the lecturer, um, but that's all. And, and it, I think it would be very unusual for somebody to say no, I've never heard of anybody saying no. Okay? For the holidays, yeah. yep. Um, they're somewhere. Second of April until the, uh, and the new term starts on the 30th of April, so you get most of April off for the Easter break. And then we finish in the first week of June, and then you've got a study week, two weeks of exams, two weeks of holiday, and we're back on the 9th of July. And then you've got until the 20th of which to change your courses or taste test those courses again. And then again, that, that runs through till the um, end of September, I think it is, or no, end of August. Of August. And then there's two weeks holiday and then six weeks and then basically you've got your exams and you're finished by mid-November. Yep. All barring an earthquake and it all changing, but... <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. You'd need to change your course? Well, like, if you have a clash, then you can change your course. See you, Tracy, or...? What? <laughs> have, a, have a clash need to change? Yes, well, if you need to change, you, you can come and check with me to see if you've got some other ideas or suggestions. Basically, just jump back onto your UC student web, go through the system, drop a course, add the course, 
and submit it again and make sure that it gets um, fully enrolled. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, that's on your UC student web. Yep, go through the main homepage, students, UC student webs. Mm -mm. Yep. If you are thinking of changing, um, don't, if, if, unless you're 100% confident of the change you're making, don't hesitate to talk to Tracy just to make sure you don't end up with a silly combination that doesn't give you any kind of um, avenues to move forward. So don't hesitate to ask for advice, eh? Because you don't want to end up with a silly set of courses that don't take you anywhere. <laughs> cool. Yeah. The the my timetable one is the accurate one. Okay? And hopefully there isn't a gap. Any other questions? Okay, I've got two more slides that I want to show you. Can I just have a wee yeah, for a minute? Tracy, yeah. um, another thing is with your um, uh, your emails, uh, the College of Science puts out a newsletter every term called Synapse. Uh, you're more than welcome to delete it without reading it, but um, I would like you to at least <laughs> glance at it. Um, and within that, we also have useful information which you may be interested in knowing about. And one of the things in the first term and second term that we're going to be running this year is when Mohammed and I have got together and we're going to run some transitional courses for guys and girls who are not actually up to speed with things or are not passing or are stressing out. And so Mohammed can tell you what courses we're going to be running and you're more than welcome to come along. Uh, practically, this, this course is about like study skills. Uh, the first one will be about time management how to manage your timetable, uh, how to organize your time, set up priorities. It's kind of like tips. Uh, we can't force you to do it. It's up to you, but it's to help you from our experience how to survive with this workload. The second one will be about uh, asking questions in the lectures, how to ask your lectures. One, one of you ask, do I interrupt the lectures or not? Uh, about the study style we have in Canterbury. The third one will be about exam preparation, which is going to be very close to the midterm exam. So, help you how to prepare your exam. For the second term, from the same semester, we will repeat some of them, but we will present them in a different way. So, you're all welcome to join us. We will make sure to announce that on the newsletter. And it's for free, no, no need, just show up in the lecture theater. Uh, most of them, actually all of them, it's six lectures between the two terms. They're going to be on Tuesday uh, from 5 to 6.30. So we try to avoid all the lectures time. Uh, when is the date? Uh, we have to announce that again just to double check that. All right? Okay. I'm just going to finish up with a couple of slides. One of them, this one here, is about a campus building update and just to uh, provide some reassurance really about the safety of campus. There are currently 420 buildings on campus um, that are open and cleared for use and all of those buildings are safe and fully functional. There are no buildings that are at risk of collapse on campus and you might say, well, I'd hope not. We had two that were at risk of collapse and we've demolished those, so those have gone. And you'll probably see um, on, on Crake Road, you may have seen there's a bit of a site where two buildings have come down. There are no collapse hazard buildings on campus. There's, there's a whole lot of new building activity. It's been very busy over the summer in terms of building. The main library is being refurbished um, and upgraded. And is also lots of sort of student social space being configured underneath it. So cafes and restaurants and stuff like that. It's looking like it's going to be a really nice place to hang out right in the middle of campus. And that's just over the green, just out here. And the other one that will be completed by the end of term one is the student event centre. So a place for bars and bands and stuff like that. And that's going to be finished by the end of term one. And that's over on Island Road on the other side of the, um, the um, student union building. If you're interested in finding out more about that, and it might be that your parents are interested in finding out more about that, why don't you send them to YouTube where you can download a video. It might not be what you most like to look at on YouTube, but if your parents are concerned and worried and want to know more, please do feel free to send them there. Just a few words, um, a wrap up, and then we'll have to get out of here quick because Art's are wanting to come in. 
Work hard. If you want to get the most out of university, work hard. Aim for A's. Don't aim to pass. That's boring. Aim for A's. You want to do well. Play hard too. You'll work harder if you play hard. Seek advice and help. There's loads of sources of help of all kinds on campus. Make sure you use them. Your student fees are paying for them after all. You might as well get value out of them. Have fun both in your working and your playing. Keep yourself safe in every way, not just in relation to earthquakes, but be sensible. Um, and good luck. So enjoy your university time and see you soon.